Those loved by God, where does your help come from? Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Our help is in Jesus Christ, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. One of my favorite passages in the Bible is found in Jeremiah 29, verse 11. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. I thought of that verse often as I was working through my devotion leading up to Christmas. As I looked at the lives of some of the main characters in the Christmas story, I was reminded many times that God's plans are often not the same as ours. I share a few examples. Mary, God does not look at your earthly resume to determine your spiritual worth. Mary wasn't focused on the now. She was focused on what she knew the Lord would do through her obedience. She chose to praise him before she even knew what the outcome would be. When you decide to live boldly for Jesus, it won't always be easy, but it will always be worth it. Mary understood that God had chosen her to serve him and she willingly obeyed. That was enough. Mary's final words to the angel of the Lord were simply, I'm the Lord's servant. May your word be fulfilled. What I learned from Joseph. Fulfilling God's call in our lives should never be about getting credit for what we do. But simply, it's about being obedient to God. If the world never knows of our service, that's all right. God sees it all and he knows it all. And that's enough. Joseph signed up for a background, background role for the rest of his life. When we think of the parents of Jesus, most would acknowledge Mary as his mother and that he is the son of God. Joseph quickly gets out of the story. And so I need to ask myself, is it okay with me if no one seems to care or notice what I am doing? Would I still do this if God were the only one who knew about it? And Elizabeth. Nothing good comes from allowing bitterness or envy to creep into our lives. Can you imagine Elizabeth's joy to share with her family and friends that she was finally going to be a mother and that her son was the one God had chosen to prepare the way for the Messiah? Then her cousin comes to her and says, she has news that is even greater. Her son will be bigger and greater than Elizabeth's. Now, no doubt, the temptation for jealousy was there, but Elizabeth didn't fall for it. When we choose to celebrate others, it encourages everyone. When we see God moving in someone else's life, let's rejoice with them as Elizabeth did with Mary. What's really important is that God's work is being done, not who has chosen to do it. Encouragement is never wasted words. So let's look for opportunities for God to use us to affirm the work that he is doing in the lives of others. As we begin a new year, 2021, I pray that like Mary, I can say that I am the Lord's servant that I will be obedient to him and I will live boldly for him, knowing that his ways are not always the same as my ways. I pray that I will be like Joseph, that I am able to be obedient to God, that I'm able to live in the background and serve God, even if no one else notices what I'm doing. And I pray that I can be like Elizabeth, not allowing bitterness or envy to creep into my life, but instead, I desire to encourage others and celebrate their accomplishments instead of my own. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Now may the peace of Christ go with you wherever you may be. May he guide you through the wilderness protect you through the storm. May he fill you with thanksgiving at the wonders he has shown you, and may he bring us home rejoicing face to face again once more. God bless you.